Hello everyone, it's Shanna, so glad you're here. Now, um, I've been working on this KCC 15 last set. This is my June set that I'm gonna upload, and I just have five more sketches to work on. So we're just gonna pull out 11, and we're gonna get to assembling this, and we're gonna bring in our card base, and I've got all the elements lined up and ready to go, and so hopefully we can do these five fairly quickly. So I've used this new embossing folder from Spellbinders, um, Summertime, waves i think that's what it's called i'll link it in the description box below but i'm going to uh, emboss that panel and then we'll get it laid down on our card base and we'll begin building our card so you can see i've got some really nice embossing on there um, and i i like both sides and i think i actually decided to do the deboss side and just flip it over and lay it down because both um, sides have really good dimension on them this is a really nice embossing folder so I'm going to get it laid down on my card base, and then I'm going to bring in the um, pattern paper that I have cut from the cutting guides. And right now I'm just trimming the edge of my um, card uh, panel down just because it was a little bit long. And I'm going to start adhering the pattern paper to the layered panel that the sketch calls for. And I'll just get it laid down on there. And I've still got this fun pastel rainbow colored paper that I'm just loving and I'm trying to get it lined up evenly so I'll have even space on each side of those pieces of pattern paper. And so we'll just get it glued up and laid down on there. And I think all these colors are gonna look beautiful together. And I, I since I trimmed up that card panel, I had to trim up this panel as well. And I trimmed it a little bit and it wasn't quite enough so I was going to trim it again. And so now I've got it where I need it and I'm gonna lay it down on my card base and then we will bring in our focal points for their card. So what I've got here is another circle of my pattern paper and I've got another layer and then I have got a better press sentiment that I had previously done and I just die cut it out in a circle and I'm gonna layer it up on here. Now this actually calls that you put them like I first showed you with one on one side and one on the other but I'm going to actually layer them up together because I like the way that looks and I think that'll work out just fine and I'm going to bring in some enamel dots and just do some embellishing on this card and that will pretty much take care of sketch 11 and I think it turned out really nice this set of cards is just absolutely beautiful if you like pastels um, I think you'll like this set so I'm gonna bring in sketch 12. And for this one, I have taken a um, emboss and cut folder from Spellbinders. And I've also got another embossing folder panel here. It's a basket weave pattern. And I'm gonna get it laid down on a card. And then I'm gonna bring in some yellow for this. I thought I'd introduce a new color and it'll kind of help go with that emboss and cut butterfly panel that I have there and then my pattern paper has yellow in it, and we'll just get it layered up. Now I think this sketch um, called, yeah, it did call for a circular um, element, but I'm choosing to use this. I had this laying around in my craft room. I had um, created it and had just set it aside, and I thought it would blend nicely with this pattern paper. It would just fit right in, and so I'm gonna use it. Right now I'm just creating the banners that the sketch calls for, and you have one in the upper right and then one in the lower left, and I think I decide to forego the one in the lower left. I think I trim it up and then um, decide that I'm going to leave it off. So we'll see, I'm trying to recall. Yeah, so I'm laying it down on there. and then I decide to pull it off and just clean off my glue and then get it laid down on there. Now I did this video six or 11 through 15 the same day that I did six through 10, and I just did them back to back. In fact, I even did my craft roulette video that day, and then I'm catching up on my voiceovers at a later date. So I'm trying to recall exactly what I did <laughs> with these cards. But I'm bringing in some more of those lilac sentiments that I had from yesterday's video and just gonna get some of those laid down. I'm just gonna lay this one down at the bottom and I think that looks nice. And I really like the yellow element. So just kind of cleaning things up, wiping the glue away and I'm gonna bring in sketch 13 and I showed you the picture of that 
And you can see I've got another one of those summertime wave embossed panels in there and a light pink that I'm going to use. I'm going to bring in my card base. And I'm showing you, I just use the same one as Sketch 11. And I think it's a different color of paper, though. This is, looks a little more peachy, and the other one looks a little bit more pink. And I'm going to trim up my card base, and then we will begin assembling. It looks like I perhaps needed to go ahead and trim it one more time. Okay, so now we're ready, and I'm just going to bring in the elements. And I think I've got everything cut and ready to go. I'm going to layer this... Um, pattern colorful pattern paper just down on the lavender um, layer and I've got these three banners these three strips that I'm going to banner up and this is the the sketch that has a long banner in the middle and then a shorter one on one side and then kind of a medium one on the other and I am not good at cutting these banners I really need to use a die for them because I struggle with this this is not my strong suit so you'll see I'm making multiple cuts trying to get it to look like something, but it'll be okay. So I'm going to glue it up, and I'm just getting a good amount of glue so I can wiggle those around and make them long or shorter or however I want to make them, and then line them up right there together as the sketch calls for. And I think I'm just doing a little cleanup, and I'm going to get it laid down on my card base. And I think I bring in some more of that hammer mill cardstock um, scrap because I feel like with it laying on those banners that it's going to be uneven. So I'll just paper piece some of that cardstock on there just to kind of help level it out. And then we'll add some more glue and we will get it laid down on our card base. And you can see I've got a white strip there and then another one of those lavender um, sentiments. It calls for a larger strip on the sketch. And so I'm just going to layer it, layer it up. I'll layer my... And it'll also help the sentiment to pop with that white behind it. So I'm just trying to get it light up, lined up and then we'll get it laid down on there. And I really enjoyed working with this set of pattern papers and I've also enjoyed the Kinder's Card Challenge 14 sketches. But I've got to admit I'm really excited for Kinder's Card Challenge 15. There's going to be some really fun things in store and we're going to have our um, introduction hop on July 2nd so you'll have to check it out and there will, will be a chance to win some prizes so I hope you'll check it out so this one I have all of the elements in my envelope along with a Gina K stamp it's got some happy birthday sentiments and I thought this um, polka dot and striped pattern paper with the shaker bits uh, shaker window um, called for a birthday card and so I'm going to use those extra strips that were optional and kind of put them in the corners there and figure out where I want to stamp happy birthday. I want it to be inside my shaker. And so I'm going to just line it up on my Misty and try to get my shaker panel there, the circle, with an even margin around all the way around there so that I can stamp this pretty much in the center of that circle and have a good margin on there and I'm just double checking it making sure it's right and I'll pick that up and it pulled my piece of uh, cardstock up my panel and so I'm going to double check it I'm just going to line it up and double check it make sure it looks good and then we'll just ink this up and stamp it down and then it will be underneath where our shaker window is going to be And so we're going to give it a couple of inkings and get it good and inked up. And then we'll, we'll be able to create our shaker on that. So I'm just going to clean off my stamp and get it put away so I don't lose it. And then we'll um, begin assembling this. So I'm going to lay this yellow panel down on our card base. Make sure I've got it to where it's um, full opening in the right direction. Sometimes you, um, when you make a lot of cards, you have a tendency to uh, glue one on upside down. So I'm making sure I didn't do that. And I'm just going to bring in some acetate that I had. And this was probably packaging. And I'm going to try this tape runner here. And I don't like this tape runner. I have a terrible time with it. So I'm going to just bring in my tear tape. 
and I'll just line this square all the way around with some tear tape and then we'll layer acetate down on that. I prefer uh, um, tear tape or tape runner on acetate because the glue just makes a mess and we all know I'm a messy gluer. So we'll just lay some of this down. We'll get the release paper off and then we'll get that acetate laid down on there and I'll cut it to where um, we have a nice edge all the way around our panel and we'll be able to create a shaker on this card. This is what, you know, one of those scene type cards um, which we've been having recently in the challenges. So I'm just going to lay this acetate down on there, press real nice, and then I'll just take my scissors and just trim around there. It does take me a couple of trimmings because I don't get real close on one of the sides and I have to kind of keep trimming it up until I get it where I want it. But I'm just going to, you know, cut all those, um, all that extra acetate off and then we'll uh, bring in some foam tape and I'm just going to use some of this eighth of an inch foam tape from uh, scrapbook.com and create my well around my um, square here and then we'll just drop our embellishments down on that yellow piece of cardstock and then we will um, be able to lay this panel right down on top of all of our embellishments. So I'm just making sure each of the corners meet so that we don't have any embellishments that sneak out and I'm using my bone folder to give a good press down and I'm going to make sure I get it lined up and I must see some more acetate so I'm doing some more trimming and I'm just going to take the release paper off of the double-sided foam tape and I'll bring in my embellishments and I think um, it took me a minute to find what I wanted to use but then I remembered this um, big bunch of sequins that I'd gotten from Hobby Lobby and I grabbed them because I've been trying to use these up and they're kind of in the pastel color so I thought they'd work out nicely and now I get too much on there and I get this laid down and I realize it's too much for me to see my happy birthday sentiment and so I'm going to lift the edge of it up and pull some of them out not the most ideal situation I thought I needed more than what I did and so I'm going to just lift that corner and shake some out and um, and still thinking I've got too much, so I'm going to shake a little bit more out. And you can see I had quite a bit in there. And I'm just tucking them all back down in there, and then I'll give it a good press with my bone folder, check it to make sure nothing's escaping, and we're good to go. We'll get the rest of these sequins out of the way, and you'll be able to see it's your birthday through the window, and also, as well as the sequins. We'll bring in this layered piece, and we'll add our patterned paper down. Now this piece here of pattern paper was supposed to be bannered but I just decided I wasn't going to banner it. I was just going to lay it down there as a strip and I think it looks nice on there and then I will bring in some embellishments I noticed that when I die cut this um, polka dot piece out it did have some um, marks on there from the die cutting machine and so I'm going to strategically place these enamel dots to help cover up some of those marks that were on that panel um, and so it would look nice and then I'm just going to lay these enamel dots down and we'll add a couple more I think in the blue area just to add a little bit more interest and to fill in kind of that empty blue space there on the lower um, left hand side and I'm still debating on whether I want to do that or not And I think this is where I decided to go ahead and bring them in and to lay them down on there. I was thinking about stamping something on there, and then I thought, no, I'm just going to add some more embellishments and just get them laid down on there. I was looking at that Gina K stamp set to see if there was something else. There were some things I could have added, but I decided not to do it. And then we'll just move on to the next card. And I've got this 3D embossed panel here that I love. I love this embossing folder. It really gives some great dimension. And I trimmed it down to where I'd have a little white edge all the way around. And I'm going to bring in this layer and get it laid down and then we'll bring in the um, pattern paper from the cutting guide and we're going to layer it up. And I think that looks really pretty together. We'll get it glued up, get it laid down on our card base. And then I've got this square panel that I need to lay down on here. 
And I think I'm going to need a little bit of cardstock to put on that edge that's going to hang over those two pan the two panels um, because we've got some dimension there. And we'll just glue that up and lay that down. And then I've got this um, shadow word die, happy birthday from Cat Scrappiness that I absolutely love. And I used some blue for the, sh or some pink for the shadow and blue for the happy birthday. And I think it really looks pretty on this. So these are my five cards and this will finish up my set of 15. And I hope you like them. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.